dollar rand. I think we're going to bring Bridget Taylor in right now at this point. And of course, it is all the uh, mining action that we're seeing, the labor unrest, and it's just going to get worse from here if we continue to see the situation. Well, there's a couple of factors. I mean, we've, you know, it is a bit of a perfect storm. You're looking at the eurozone that's come under pressure, the dollar strengthened across the board. Um, you've seen the euro go below 129. You've seen the yen back above 103. So all of these, as well as the fact that we've got negative fundamental issues happening in South Africa, as well as now the ratings agency starting to rumble about potential downgrades again, um, all posing negative outcomes in terms of the RAND, and the RAND is the best indicator of the underlying fundamentals in a country, as you've seen across the board, whereas the asset classes are purely being driven because we've seen this huge wall of cash coming from the quantitative easing that then encourages investors to look for other alternative investments. So we've seen it both in the equity markets as well as the bond markets. Um, equities at all-time highs. It's, it's unbelievable in an environment where there's zero growth. Well, that will talk to, to your book in terms of equities at all-time highs uh, and the disconnect that we're seeing between underlying economics and uh, the equity environment. Mark, I know that you, you're not big on the underlying mm. economics. You look mm. at the company and you drill down into what's happening on balance sheet. Yeah, we've had all this popcorn coming up and uh, it's all very noisy and uh, shock horror and so forth. But, you know, in the real world, people get on with things and they manage as best they can, and they mitigate the external factors as best they can. And um, you know, a number of companies are, are still doing fairly well. I was analyzing SPA just earlier on, I just put out a note on SPA. And um, there's a very good example of a business model that is incredibly resilient and capable of being adaptable to difficult circumstances. And Bruce, let's bring you in here. Of course, we do live in that real world. How are you feeling about the environment at the moment? Well, I, I can't agree more with, uh, with Mark. And at the end of the day, uh, businesses are run by management teams. Success and making money in the stock market has less to do what the market does and more to do what management teams of companies are doing. So if you're doing your homework well and you're watching uh, every year management saying this is what they are going to do, and they do that, invariably you'll go through some difficult patches and markets do go down. We can never predict when that is going to happen. And obviously we're sitting at very lofty levels and a lot of enthusiasm with new money coming in. So that's always a time to be a little bit more cautious. But you stick to the fundamentals, good management, and you're going to make money in the stock market. Now, if the RAND is the best barometer <coughs> of those underlying fundamentals, what are we in for? Are we going to hit 10 on dollar RAND? Well, the dollar rand, now that it's broken above that 9.12 level again, definitely um, above 9.32 opens up 9.60 on the top side. And the real risk that we run is the investors from offshore are very, very concerned once again with the word Marikana and the unrest that, that, that is happening there again, despite the fact that it isn't at the same level that we saw last year. And fortunately, what it does create is this negative sentiment towards South Africa as an investment uh, vehicle. Um, obviously, on the bond market, we still continue to see um, some support. However, we have weakened off significantly on the back of what's happened on the RAND. I think the bigger picture really right now that we're looking at is what's going to happen next week with MPC. What does the interest rate forecast look like? Because if you look at central banks globally, in fact, today, Turkey also talked about, um, in fact, they cut by 50 basis points. But then they don't have an inflationary issue. And so are like, you expecting a cut? No, I'm not. And the reason being because there's, you know, the RAND at these levels poses upside inflationary pressures, um, as well as well as the fact that we are funding quite an expansive um, and expanding uh, deficit number, which poses definite upside risk for the RAND. Is there value in the market right now, Mark? Yeah, well, uh, in, if you're looking at it in, in, in dollars or pounds or euros, absolutely there is. And in fact, what I'm seeing too is that you know, uh, foreigners are cottoning on that South Africa almost gets to the abyss but never goes over the abyss type thing. And you know, we, we're probably going through yet another period of, you know, extreme negativity, bad things happening, currency is extremely weak. And the, these are very pivotal points. And, and I think at some point we are going to come back. So, again, if you look at the companies and you say, but I can get them relatively cheap. Um, and, and cheap, you know, for me might not be cheap for somebody else. Um, but there is relative value and, and there is reasonable growth. Um, Where is that relative value? Even in some of the retailers, people say to me, but SPAR on a P, uh, on a P of 20 is, is cooked. I don't agree with them. I think it's relatively good value for money. Um, you know, uh, companies like Barlow's um, are, are on uh, also very attractive P's, not 20, probably half of that going on, on, a, on a forward looking basis. Um, 
but they're also very good yielders too. So, you know, with the valuation of a company, I think often PEs are quite dangerous in, in isolation. Um, but, um, you know, a whole host of industrial companies, I mean, there's no, it's, there's no accident that the market's at 41,000. Um, for every seller, there's a buyer, and we just happen to have more buyers than sellers. <laughs> Bruce, do you agree with uh, the, the relative valuation there on Barlow World and on SPA? Do you deem those to, to be stocks that you would be accumulating? Look, we, <coughs> we, we're coming off the base of a, holding, a massive holding in ShopRite that we've had for nearly a decade, and that we've been a net seller of probably portfolio readjustment more than anything else, just the weighting in our portfolios had got uh, quite large. I love the management team, I love the business, but they've still got to do a lot of growth in Africa to justify where their price is at the moment. So I wouldn't be rushing out and buying retailers. <laughs> I'd, I'd say they're, they're on Mark's side. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that what you might get is, is a sharp capitulation in the RAND, and you might get an exodus of foreigners. And what concerns me is there have been very large net buyers of our retailers. Now, I think that could be your opportunity to relook at the retailers. Because I think the, if we look at uh, the, the South African economy expanding, the change in distribution of wealth and income, there's a massive emerging middle class in South Africa that is going to consume more. So that is an area that you want to be in. Plus, you've obviously got the springboard of a lot of opportunities in Africa as well. So I certainly wouldn't write the retailers off. Come on, Mark, write to respond. <laughs> Well, I, I think there's, there is some certainty in, in the growth. One size doesn't fit all, you know, for everyone who wants to short pick and pay, and I don't, in fact. Um, in fact, that's the most expensive stock on the market, if you think about it, on a trading basis. <laughs> it could be either the cheapest or the most expensive on a forward basis, depending on what view you take on how they get that business uh, righted. Um, but could we know, apply what you said to SPA to the retailers, or are we extrapolating too well, much in SPAR, that? Well, SPA is unique because it's not a retailer. It's a wholesaler and it distributes. And what's interesting, in fact, they're getting in, uh, there's a lot of appeal for their model throughout the region now. I think they've got four stores in Mozambique now, or their retail partners have, shall we say, the independent uh, people who run these things. Uh, so their, their model ha is quite different. To a, Explain a that to me in a little, a little bit more detail, because I would see them as a, as a food retailer. No, they're not. Um, they, they wholesale, they distribute, but the retail is done by independent enterprising individuals, mm -hmm. and there, therein lies the difference with a pick and pay or a shop right. So I think Bruce makes a very good point. Shop right may be pricing in a certain perfection, but there is that known unknown in these retailers and I think what you're alluding to Bruce is quite correct that there is that great unknown out there we know there's something out there we can't quite quantify it it's not PPC in a sense correct you know I have a sense that PPC Africa is going to be as big as PPC South Africa within five to seven years you can do some uh, scenarioing on that um, and if the probability looks pretty okay, you'll start to price some of that in, if not all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Bridget, you've been listening to this conversation and I know you've always got an opinion to offer. Where do you lie in terms of valuation on the retailers? On the retailers, I agree. I think that at the moment they may be a little bit overpriced. Um, however, I think that the, the market to really be in, if I, you know, if I was looking at um, reallocating, would be more in the construction sector and potentially into, um, definitely into industrials. Other data flow other than the MPC, what will you be looking for? We're looking for CPI next week, um, inflation data. Um, and then you, the, the US data today was very, very poor and also signified, if you look at what happened with the, there was the Philly Fed came out uh, negatively on the back of manufacturing in the United States. Um, just in terms of factory orders dropping, and in, they, they much more conscious about working hours. All of the um, kind of productivity levels are dropping in, in, in the United States. And from that perspective, you've got to be a little bit concerned because we really are relying on that industry or certainly that economy to start to pick up in terms of growth. So um, we saw jobless claims also come in negatively as well as housing starts. So all of these things just show us that the global economy hasn't come out of the trough yet. And as a South African economy, we really need to consider that in terms of how we structurally reform so that we are strong when we go into the growth phase. This is all popcorn. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit big picture, but, um, you know, I just follow the trail of what, what's happening out there and what companies are doing and, and which companies are following their customers. Which that's an interesting di dynamic. There's one or two companies. NAMPAC's a very good example of that, uh, where they follow their customer into the great, you know, unknown. You know, it's a little bundu bashing stuff, you know. 
Um, Doesn't know. I don't know whether that's a wise, wise investment decision to <laughs> but, follow your but, customers. But, but you know what's well, interesting? You them, At least you're following business. your customers. <laughs> but you know what's interesting, and this is a, going back to PPC. They find that the governance in so many of these territories in which they're operating, one size doesn't fit all. But in many cases, they're finding very good governance, where you've got bureaucracy, but you know it's it, it's, it's process oriented, and you can get a result at the end of it. And I think South Africa, in many respects, is lagging behind. There's increasingly open arms in other African countries for businesses coming in. Um, and the nice thing about South African companies is that they've finally learned over the last few years, that you come in, you bring in process, but you employ locals. And I think that's, that, that's going to be the new frontier for many South African companies. Bridget, before you go, I want best case scenario on the RAND and worst case scenario on the RAND. Okay, best case scenario on the RAND at the moment. I think if we're lucky, we'll go back below nine, but only briefly. I don't think we're going to see 850 again at all. And I think worst case scenario, we're probably looking at about 9, 80, 10. By the end of the year. By the end of the year. So when you say we're not going to see 850 again at all, does that mean never? No. Well, I mean, I, th I don't think so. Not in the, the not in the, not in the longer future. future. Not in this sort of next financial year. Purely on the back of, I think that there's still a lot of uncertainty with regards to the global economy. I think that South Africa has got a lot of key issues that need to be sorted out from uh, the respect of how we're actually going to create sustainable growth. We run the huge risk that ratings agencies are uh, looking at us negatively, and that can impact in terms of funding for companies, etc. Um, so all of these things, unfortunately, are, are not looking as rosy. However, it's it's interesting to see that the gl that the global asset prices continue to rally, and how long that will continue will really rem uh, be. Rep um, remain on the back of what happens with quantitative easing. 